Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday morning. It's the last day of October. And I have a guest today. I don't know. Let me see. Come on, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Let's see. Can you guess? Let's see if you can guess who my guest is. <laughs> okay. Now sit down. Let me see. Okay. Well, it's Hallow's Eve today, ladies and gentlemen. It's Hallow's Eve. Okay. <laughs> Let us read the gospel for today. The gospel on the last day of October comes from St. Luke chapter 13, verses 18 to 21. Jesus said, What is the kingdom of God like? So, remember how... Remember how um, we don't know how the kingdom of God looks like, right? Eye has not seen nor ear heard what my Father has prepared for you in heaven. But our Lord here is uh, trying to tell us uh, metaphorically uh, how the kingdom of heaven should be or would be for us. To what can I compare it? It is like a mustard seed that a man took and planted in the garden. When it was fully grown, it became a large bush, and the birds of the sky dwelt in its branches. Again, he said, to what shall I compare the kingdom of God? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch of dough was leavened. So here we have an image, okay? two images of, um, of what heaven should be like, of what the kingdom of God is like. Not the physical heaven, because heaven is not physical. Okay? But this is, like, uh, this is a metaphor, an image of how the kingdom of God should be in us. How, how we um, um, should, should mimic, so to speak, uh, the kingdom of God in us how we can be like the living uh, manifestations that the kingdom of god is at hand in us and our lord compares it to like a seed a mustard seed which is a very small seed okay? in fact it's apparently the smallest of seeds but once it gr once it grows it also grows into a huge huge tree and all the birds of the air take refuge in that tree and well we're also we're, we're also thinking of doing some baking right learning how to bake bread and all of that well you bake cake already but we haven't tried bread yet right now in the olden days okay, i suppose even now right, you need the bread right you need it you mix it and so with wheat flour and you put a little bit of uh 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 wheat flour in the dough and you knead it you mash it you mix it okay uh it's k-n-e-e-e-e-a-d -E -E <laughs> okay you mix it you mash it you you pound it you in order to because that is what makes the bread rice you see how the bread is is not flat right it rises like that okay and that is what makes it rise up okay now those images are important because the faith the faith that we received it was infused in our soul through baptism. It's like the mustard seed. It's a small faith. It begins with something small. The initial spark of faith. The initial grace that was given to us in baptism is supposed to be nurtured. It's supposed to be uh, cared for. right? It's supposed to be uh, uh, made to grow in us. Okay? And it should grow big. It should be. Uh, it should flourish. It should be healthy in us, so that so that many other people, many other people that we get to associate with and we get to influence in the course of our lives, will take comfort, will take uh, shade, will rest in the faith that we. Uh, ourselves uh, um, uh, live out okay? like the big mustard tree okay? where all the birds of the air can take comfort can rest okay? 
our Lord says, our faith should be the same thing. Our faith should be the safe harbor okay, where many other people who we associate with in the world as we go along in our everyday lives could also take comfort and find rest for their souls. Okay? That is what, that is what uh, our faith should be, not only for us, but for everybody else who get associated with us. And just like, just like bread, just like uh, making of the bread, we also have to be like uh, wheat flour, right? That when we get mixed, when we, when we interact with other people, we have to cause their faith to also flourish and grow, just like bread rises, right? Because you mix it there, small amounts of that wheat flour, and it creates, a, it can be a huge piece of bread which everybody in the family can share. Okay? So very nice images, very nice images and metaphors that our Lord uses in this gospel to uh, um, make us imagine how our faith should not be stagnant, how our faith should actually grow and flourish in us. The question is, how do you do that? The question is, how do you make your faith grow? You got an answer, Joe? Yeah. Like what? Okay, okay. Very good. So, there are three things. There are three things we can do. Okay? First, we have to cultivate that faith. Imagine it like a plant. Right? Imagine it like a plant. What does a plant need to, to, to grow? Right? You need to cultivate it so that you can plant the seed. Right? You need to make, aerate the soil and, and, and uh, make, prepare the soil. Right? Fertilize it. Right? So, you need to cultivate it. What else do you need to do? You need to nurture it, right? You need to feed it. So you fertilize it, you water it, right? These are things that are needed to make a plant grow. What else? Huh? You need the sun. You need the sun. You need, and, and that is like the grace of God, right? The sun is, is God and, and uh, providing all the nutrients of grace on that plant. So we have to do the same thing with our faith. With our faith. So how do we do that? How do we grow our faith? Number one, as already as Joe already suggested, we have to study. We have to study. Our faith does not grow by magic. Okay? Well, of course, it is infused in us through baptism, together with hope and charity. Right? The three theological virtues. The three theological virtues that are infused in our soul uh, through baptism. But, but, just like any virtue... It also has to grow. It grows, of course, by grace, number one. But we also have to do our part to make it grow. And the first thing we need to do is to study. To study. We need to cultivate that faith by cultivating our knowledge of the faith. And we do that by studying, 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 studying. And you begin by studying the catechism, folks. Catechism, catechism, catechism. And when it comes to studying the catechism, let's memorize the catechism. This is something, this is a discipline that we have lost in many of our modern PSR classes. Pa Parish School of Religion, they don't anymore memorize the catechism. You know, that is very counterintuitive to the way kids learn. And that's the reason why they don't learn. Because <laughs> yeah, like you cannot do algebra unless you memorize uh, uh, the multiplication table okay common core does not work <laughs> so the common core uh, for the faith does not work I can already tell you that it's not going to work okay? we cannot employ common core in our faith let us do the practical thing memorize the catechism begin from that so that you can do theology when they're older like doing algebra or calculus, which begins from the practical skill of memorizing addition and memorizing the multiplication table. There is no alternative to it. There's no substitute to it. And I don't care what other PSR gurus tell you or teachers tell you about how to study the faith. There is no other substitute to it. 
but memorizing your catechism. That is the place to begin. Okay? So, study the faith. That's the way to cultivate it. Number two, nurture it. Nurture the faith. How do we nurture the faith? By acts of piety. Acts of piety. Piety. Piety, which is, uh, which is basically uh, nurtured by prayer. Prayer. And the little acts of devotion that we, that we employ um, uh, to grow our, our faith in God. Right? We have to have a relationship with God that is, um, that is developed through prayer and intimacy. And that is what piety is all about. So our little acts of prayer, beginning from uh, the, the, uh, the uh, morning offering when you wake up, to the rosary, to the angelus, to mass if you can, right? All of those uh, devotional things that we do to grow our faith is very important. Then number three, we have to grow our faith with charity, with charity. Right? It's one of the, uh, one of the um, um, uh, theological virtues. Faith uh, will grow with charity. And the basic charity we need here really is to be like the mustard seed. Right? The image of the mustard seed where all the birds of the air can, can go and take refuge and rest. We have to make ourselves like the mustard seed which accommodates people. Which, which helps People give comfort to people in their faith and help them refresh and nourish themselves in the tree, among the branches and the comforting leaves of our tree. What does that mean? In simple terms, that means we have to do apostolate. We have to be there to serve other people. Our faith grows by serving other people, by showing uh, um, uh, not only by showing good example to them, but by accommodating them, by doing acts of charity, and by serving them. That is the way we grow our faith. Okay? So again, three things. Best practices of Catholics would be study, study of faith, nurture it through piety, and and Charity by doing apostolate. Charity, yeah. okay? Charity by doing apostolate. Okay, that's that's it as far as the gospel of today is concerned, folks. But I would like to remind you, we are embarking on the man month of November. Uh, of course, in some parts of the world, it's already November. I could imagine it in the Philippines, uh, everybody's already in uh, cemeteries visiting their, uh, their uh, loved ones, their departed dead. Uh, my own uh, siblings had visited mommy uh, and, uh, and um, some of our other relatives. Shh, shh, shh. Uh, don't distract me, Joe. Uh, this is the month where we, can, um, where we can practice our pious devotion of praying for the dead. It is an act of piety, an act of piety that we uh, pray for the dead. Okay? And this whole month, we have a very good opportunity to remember the dead and pray for them every day, not only at Mass, but also in the rosaries. For them and for all the, uh, the um, souls in purgatory, our departed brethren and the souls of uh, purgatory. So let us uh, remember everybody uh, in this month of November. And then let's also remind ourselves of the last things. Right? The last things. This is the month to remember the last things and how important they are in our lives. What are those last things? The reality of judgment when we die. The reality of heaven, hell, purgatory. Let us recall and keep in mind that these are the realities we, oops, we uh, will confront at the hour of death. Right? Beginning from beginning from judgment. There will be a particular judgment where our souls will be judged at the end of our lives. And we either go straight to heaven, to purgatory, if we have to make up uh, for some, uh, some sins uh, uh, that we have committed, or unfortunately, if we have to go to hell. 
So these are very good reminders for us during this time of November. Let us keep them in mind and pray about them in our personal prayer. And remember to pray for all the souls in purgatory and for all the faithful departed. That's it for us, folks. Have a good day. And I hope you have a, a, a good early start to the month of November. And I think I have some little ghosts creeping up on me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody, have a good day. Bye-bye. <laughs>